Okay, so here's a conservation of energy problem, and we'll be dealing with potential energy and a kinetic energy to solve it. It says, a player passes a 0.6 kilogram basketball down court for a fast ball. The ball leaves the player's hands with a speed of 8.3 meters per second and it slows down to 7.1 meters per second at its highest point. Ignoring air resistance, how high above the release point is the ball when it is at its maximum height? And B, how would doubling the ball's mass affect the results in part A? Explain. Okay. So we're not going to use any motion equations or any of that to solve this, although we could, but there there is an easier way and it's it's with conservation of energy. So we know that here's the conservation of energy equation. It's the initial potential energy, which is UI, plus the initial kinetic energy equals the final potential energy plus the final kinetic energy. So it's just u plus k equals u plus k. Well, obviously. u is going to be potential energy, so we know that that's mass times gravity times height. Or instead of saying height, you can say y. I, I choose to do y, but it doesn't matter. So m times g times y. And then kinetic energy is 1 half times mass times velocity squared. So it's going to be the same for both sides. But if we do it right now, then we're not going to solve for anything. We need to first we need to we need to find which of these we actually have. So do when when the ball is thrown, do we actually have gravitational potential energy? Well, if gravitational potential energy is m times g times y, what is our height? What is y? It's zero. It's at no height right now. We're counting the player's hands where he passes the ball to be the initial height. So it's zero, so we don't have this for this equation. But do we have kinetic energy? Sure, because as soon as he releases the ball, it's already got a velocity, so that's gonna be our kinetic energy. So let's write that down, actually. So one half and mv squared equals, and then do we have potential energy? I mean, yeah, do we have potential energy at the highest point, at the end? Well, yeah, because it's got a height, it's got we don't know the height yet, we're going to solve for it, but it has a height, it's not zero. So it's going to be mgy plus, and up there, does it have kinetic energy? Yes, because it's moving at 7.1 meters per second, so it's not at rest. So, plus one, oh, I have two plus signs there, plus one half mass times velocity squared. So let's do this first part right here. One half mass. Well, you can do mass right now, but look, all three of them have mass. So we could just cancel all the masses. And right away, that the answer is B. How would doubling the mass affect the answer? Well, it wouldn't affect it, because mass isn't really used for this. So, the velocity here is independent on mass. So let's let's ignore the mass here, and let's go straight to V squared. Well, this side of the equation is the initial side. So initially, we have 8.3 meters per second. And that's going to be squared, of course. Equals mass times gravity times height. And so, again, we're not using mass, so gravity is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. And height, so that would be y plus one half, and then the velocity on the, the final velocity is 7.1, so s one half times 7.1 meters per second, and that part is going to be squared as well. So if you, if you solve this part right here, one half times 7.1 squared, and then take this value and subtract it from this side and add it to this side, which is just regular, regular algebra, so basically this right here, minus this part right here is going to equal 9.24 and now we want to solve for y so we would just divide it by 9.8 so divide by 9.8 meters per second squared equals I'm running out of room but if you divide that by 9.8 meters per second squared you get 0.94 meters 
I know I didn't write down all those steps because I was running out of room, but that's just basic algebra. As long as you have this first part right here, it's pretty easy to solve. So the ball at its highest point will be 9.4 meters. And you could get that other ways, of course, by using motion equations, but that's that would fill up this whole part and this whole part with equations and it's a lot easier to use potential energy. As soon as you have the concepts down, as soon as you can like figure out what your what your energies are, then conservation